Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Show. Today I'm testing some iconic BBC micros, and I thought what I would do is have the camera filming while I was playing with them. So I've got a TV to my side, that's not important. But I'm basically going to just sort of plug them in one at a time via their RGB, and they're direct to the mains. They've got their own built in power supplies, it's currently off, and uh, it could be exciting, that's right. So every time I sort of turn one on, it could be letting the smoke out time, and it's kind of slightly worrying me, to be honest with you, but let's have a look. Ready? Great success. Looks good so far. On with the next one. Right, plugged in and videoed up, ready to go. Let's do this thing. Ooh. Sounds good. this little thing supposed to do? Hmm. Great success! A BBC master. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. I don't know if that is the right sound. To be honest, I've never had a master. Didn't do the beep. Oh dear. Very squinty. Time for the last one. We're counting on you, buddy. Ah, it did the do. Hmm. Seems to be doing that hanging thing. I wonder if these are expecting a floppy drive. Bugger. So on the surface, at least it seems these machines are working, but off camera I had a little play and they're not quite as well as they look. And they're weird. They've got some weird sort of bits and bobs done to them. There's like a solder burn on this key. So these have had a hard life. And look, the case is kind of half off on this. So potentially need recapping after all this time. So what I'm going to do is try to figure out how to get the bottom off the case. I've, I've, I've actually got it turned up on its end, and I know you can't see that at home, but I'm just, I am just—I think I can see where the two main screws are. There's a an area at the bottom which says fix, so I'm guessing. Yeah, that is where the uh, cases are fixed. And there's one screw, it seems. In fact, no, there's no screws in it. <laughs> okay, not sure what I was trying to unscrew there. Ooh, look what's inside. Oh, what? So as I was turning it, bits of plastic and stuff are sort of breaking off. It's, it's, it's had a very tough life with that top shell. So that's the PSU here, and it says it was last tested in 1992 by John. So John certainly did a test. I don't think we can contact John and ask him what's going on. So we might have to rely on some debugging at some point. It does have this rather nasty, crusty looking battery in it though. Let's have a, a little sniff at that then. Pop that out, it's in like a, its own little shell. Ooh. I'm guessing that's the sort of battery for the clock, because these did have some sort of clock. And it's a lithium cell of all things. Mm -hmm. So it's a three volt lithium cell. So I'm guessing that's a kind of rechargeable. Do not destroy in fire, do not short circuit, do not blah, blah, blah. Abingdon, Oxford, made in the UK, so made locally. We could pick one up. So there's the speaker and there's the board. And it certainly does look a little bit clearer, doesn't it, than an old BBC B board. We're going to have a look at one of those probably soon enough. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any mods. I mean, there's this thing looks a bit weird, like someone's had a go. But I'm guessing that just could be like a repair. That just seems to be standard kind of keyboardy. The PCB does seem to run underneath, so we're going to just knock the old keyboard out. A couple of screws there. So it does actually have some screws that someone's left in it. But I, I, you know, it's hard to imagine what amazing projects this thing was used for. And what's this thing next to the brake key? I mean, again, I don't know if that's standard of a master. I've never, I've never you know, opened a master even. So we could certainly have a go at that. Now I wonder how the lithium cells in these machines differ as well from lithium cells, you know, modern lithium cells. I mean, could you kind of fit something like that? Would it explode? 
And I do, I do quite like this design of this battery thing too. I don't know if that leaks. Does it all get contained within that, or does it still work its way through? I'm going to go with working its way through, of course. Right, one more screw, perhaps. Yes, yes. Now I don't know about Master, but a BBC B recap kit. I think they're relatively cheap, but relatively simple as well. So. I'd probably think it'd be worth investing in one for one of these if you're going to play with one or keep it. Let's have a go at popping out this. It does have that crazy sort of thing with the power supply where it just has all these weird power rails jumping to all different parts of the board. Come on! I gotcha. Oh, it's just single pin header there. It's a single row pin header. You'll see that now. Huh. Okay. Probably should have paid more attention. I guess it doesn't matter which part of these. It's weird though. That does. That definitely looks odd. Like someone's made that. Maybe they just sort of repaired it. No problemo. Let's just try to get this one out. There we go. Had to fight it, but we've got it out. Yeah. Look at that. That's weird. It's definitely that's an acorn thing, and there's a lot of hand soldering there. Someone's done something here. Probably uh, explains the reason because when I tried to use this, uh, the uh, some of the keys didn't work. So perhaps it's no longer functioning. So internally, though, I, I'm guessing I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary now. I've taken all that part off, of course, and it's just looking pretty standard. The only thing that's kind of slightly interesting is this piggyback chip here. Um, so I don't know what that's doing. So that's basically what it looks like. Um, Underneath it's got a uh, P8420DM7LS04N. Isn't that a voltage regulator or something? And then on top there's a, uh, you know, what's this called? It says it's an Acorn chip. And it says VM9482. Oh, am I doing this? You could you could be reading this yourself. Um, 2310241028. It's been a long day. Forgive me. Well, I guess uh, I'll just pop this back in and we'll have a look at the next one. Now, let's look at a BBC B. I've already undone the two screws at the back. I think these are a bit easy, aren't they? Don't they? No. No, don't be silly. No. Oh, no, there are two more screws. Bugger. So two screws at the back, two underneath. You get quite a lot of room on the uh, BBC Bs there in terms of their expansion. Disk drive, printer, user port, one megahertz bus, a whole one megahertz. And the tube, R, registered trademark. I love that, R. I wonder if anyone else is using the tube. So, it's got the switch on it too. Do, do. Be careful then in case it is hooked up to something. It's got a really nice long wire, that's cool. Look how long that wire is. That is done by a true pro who's left plenty of wire for Mr. Hacky Hacky to come along and mess with it. Now, I wonder if this is the sort of cable that the old uh, master had that we just looked at and they've, you know, basically knackered it and had to replace it. And I do see some sexy stuff here because that blue thing definitely looks odd. So I'm just undoing here the keyboard and it is screwed from underneath, but. For some reason, I'm very luckily managing to take off the machine screws by hand. I suspect they're going to drop, though. Caution hazard of electric shock. Of course, these are all unplugged. Just putting the old screws away. We don't want to lose these screws. These are vintage classic screws. So there's the keyboard. So all of that's normal, by the way. All that looks pretty normal. And depending on what options, you can see what chips and things are shoved in here. I don't know what that is. That's, maybe it's got the Econet. I think that could be what that is. And then we'll fold back the goodness. Although, hang on, there is an interesting wire here. You can just about see that going to this chip here. Very curious, curious and curious. Sometimes that's sort of like a sideways ram hack. If you remember the other beep that I did, it had that in it. <gasps> oh, it's got some weird stuff in it. Lots of weirdness. Let's move the old unit over to here. So just as a quick overview, everything else looks pretty normal apart from this thing here. And it's got a Varta battery on it. 
and obviously there's a switch here and it's a, like a RAM upgrade, a ROM upgrade. So if we look here, this chip seems to say AMCOM NFS. AMCOM Network File System. Maybe it's part of a, a sort of upgrade for the Econet. And then there's a Acorn Japan Computers Limited, an 8412. I don't know what that is. It could be just the standard, you know, operating system. But let's take this out of the way. And there's another one, AMCOM DFS. And another one of those acorn chips so one could be the language file but what's all this crust <gasps> is that battery acid leaking on everything maybe you can see there's a bit of a crusty rail here going on that's got some crusty rail action in fact it's almost t ah crusts it was almost too crusty so that's um sad isn't it but let's see what's on here you've got a chip here which is an sn 74LS00N, and then you've got a couple of chips here, both the same. You can see that they're marked West Germany HM6264LP-15, and again, I'm guessing they're two ROMs. And the fact that it's got a battery on it kind of suggests to me that maybe it's something to do. You can see that's a disk filing system. Maybe it's all something to do with a file timestamp. But yeah, that's curious, and we don't know what that switch does. It might be a read-write switch or something. Who knows? Let's pack this back up, and we'll find what's inside the next one. By the way, I love this. You know how they've got this switch here for turning on and off whatever that was in there? There's a hole down here at the bottom of the keyboard, but clearly it was there. They tried it there first, and I was like, ah, it keeps getting in my bloody way. And then they moved it to here. Next one, and this one has a very interesting mod, doesn't it? Because it's got a speaker mod. <laughs> Stop the sounds coming out. Oh, hello. Ooh, no screws in the cover. Very, very exciting. Very exciting indeed. Oh, wow, look at this. The whole board is different. It's like a total, totally different revision. I think the other board we looked at was a... Um, a Rev 4 or something, but what's weird is I've only ever seen all of these down here, but I think now they've they've sort of moved them up that part. I'm just gonna have a look, so we don't have to take everything out. I'm just gonna turn this and have a look down there. Yeah, there's nothing to see, nothing to she down there. Very, very curious though. So you can see here there's a lot of missing components, and what you could back in the day do is buy, you see all these parts? You could actually buy them and upgrade, you know, to upgrade it. So I think some of the ports were there, maybe I don't know like the RS423 uh, or the Econet or whatever and whatever that other thing that's here that I've never seen anything in and um, you could buy like a kit to sort of put them in and do the jumpers so this is it's a very interesting revision so here though you can see that the uh, memory the ROM chips and operating system and stuff like that are over here so this one says it's got interchat and if you look if I take this off very quickly you see there's a little window in there that's like an ultraviolet window that allows these to be erased, erased for eternity. So it's kind of annoying now that I have to I have to put stick that down again now, don't I? So it's got Interchat, the Acornsoft Basic Editor, and then this one, dump, dump out, dump out, whatever dump out is, and then the one seven seventy DFS, and then whatever that is, which could be standard, but very interesting indeed I, I don't know if how you can tell on things like RAM and stuff if um, probably you'd have to count up all of these little RAM chips or something but yeah very groovy right on to the next BBC we have which is that last master oh focus look at this John tested it down here there's a label here if you can't quite see it see the little green label inspection John tested that in 1991, good old John, and uh, clearly he did a good job because it's still working-ish. Now, I did a little test on these. If you recall earlier when we tried them, it sort of seemed to hang. I think that's something to do with the uh, floppy uh, bios -y thing. So I, did, I held down Control F whilst hitting brake and that seemed to have the effect of uh, kicking out something. So it went into a prompt, like a weird, like like a BIOS prompt, let's put it that way. It wasn't a language, it was something else. So apparently there's some commands you can type in there to tell it to stop looking. 
for a floppy, but these all expect it. So I don't even know if they've got any ROMs that will actually run, if they've got any basic or anything, or if they're just all expecting it. Gosh, that's a long screw. I can see already though, there's this weird yellow thing in there. It looks like a battery. I think, is this already a different revision than the other one? We're going to discover any moment now, I guess. Right, so let's flip this back over. There's something weird about the master. It's got these smooth parts, which I don't know. Oh, the keyboard is so funky. It's definitely had a hard life. It's a hard knock life. Oh, hello. Right, so gone is the battery from here. But look, there's some other weird battery with a kind of nine volt battery snap. Warning, do not replace batteries. Replace complete unit when exhausted with an Acorn approved part. Well, Mr. Acorn, I think we will be the judge of that. We're gonna have a look. That's what we're gonna do. So in terms of board layout, everything else looks kind of similar, doesn't it, to what we saw before. Nothing fancy. Just gonna turn this over. Yeah, there's no like higgledy piggledy fancy schmancy chips. Although we do get a good look now at the keyboard ribbon. Remember the other one had the knackered keyboard ribbon. However, however, what have you noticed here? It doesn't have that additional weird board that was in, in between there and there. So it's all it's all together very strange. They must have been making these for years, mustn't they really? I mean, the power supply on that looks totally different and it's really shiny. Maybe the other one was just kept in a hole. It would be interesting to know though, compared to a B, what you got as standard. Because I think some of the things that you had to sort of upgrade on a B, like the Econet and things like that, probably just came as standard. By then it was probably decided it was cheaper for them just to throw it on there. And I believe there was one with a floppy drive. It might be a BBC uh, Master Compact. Probably the last kind of generation that uh, before the old Archimedes really got in there. Right, let's get that clip. Is that actually a clip on this one as well? Yeah, there's definitely some clip action going on with that thing there. Yeah. Got it. Right, so. In fact, I'm thinking, why am I taking the damn keyboard out? Just to sh I'll show you. That's what's underneath it then. Nothing too too sexy to see. Um, yeah, I thought I was getting... Okay, I'm just losing my mind. Losing my mind. Losing my mind. So that's the crate. Oh, my life. Do not replace batteries. Replace complete unit when exhaustive with acorn approved part. But when you turn it over... Oh, look at that. It's got a whole bunch of those funky little batteries. I bet they're the same lithium cells that we saw in that earlier one. And I wonder why you need three of them now compared to the one there. Oh, hang on, that looks like a regular Duracell. Duracell. Bear with me. I'm trying not to get too much scuzz on me. Um, yeah, look, it's just a, like a regular bat. Ah! Flick that all down me trousers. Let me just dust myself off. I don't want any holes in me clothes. No holes for me, please. That's my good work shirt. Yeah, this looks like just regular Duracell batteries LR6 and a look, snap, 1.5 volts. So that's odd, isn't it? Very, very odd. Um, huh. So the other one was definitely using a, a rechargeable lithium cell and they definitely had made provision for it like that. But then this one, and I didn't pay attention to which way around that went, which is kind of annoying now. Uh, <laughs> um, it clearly isn't a rechargeable cell. So we learnt something new today, didn't we? So I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do with these things. It's... Uh, they're kind of poorly, kind of not. Um, certainly look like they're going to benefit from a lot of work, some more than others. And um, I don't know yet. I don't know. Just just subscribe if you're not subscribed and then just keep a lookout for any email that features a sort of BBC micro um, on it. But yeah, gacky.
not nice. Thank you very much for watching.